Hey there, this is Ben from BeEmotion.Design, and I'm here for Boris Effects to show you Parallax Strips, which is a brand new effect in Sapphire 2019.5. So brand new in Sapphire 2019.5 is a new plugin called Parallax Strips, and it exists as an effect as well as a transition. So Sapphire 2019.5 is a free update for anyone who bought Sapphire 2019 or who has an active Boris FX upgrade and support contract. So what is Parallax Strips? Well, before I answer that, let me explain to those of you who may not be familiar with what Parallax or the Parallax effect or what that means. So Parallax is an effect whereby the position of an object appears to differ when viewed along two different lines of sight. Whether you know the science behind what's happening or not, you see parallax all the time and not just in everyday life, but in movies and television as well. So as with all Sapphire plugins, Parallax Strips is host agnostic, which means it works in all of the supported host applications. So for the first example, we're going to be in After Effects because I want to show you the basic functionality of the plugin before we go too far down the rabbit hole. So we'll apply Parallax Strips to this piece of footage right here. And if you're familiar with other Sapphire plugins, um, then you're going to see a lot of similarities in functionality that you'd see in other effects like load and save preset, mask from layer, or mask from path, as well as uh, mocha tracking built right in. And next, you'll see a mode parameter, which has two settings, automatic and manual. Automatic mode looks at the length of the clip that the effect is applied to and maps the timing of the effect to the duration of the clip. Manual mode, as it suggests, allows you to have manual control to keyframe the amount yourself. To show off the rest of the parameters, I'm going to switch the show parameter from result to strips over source. And now we see a grayscale representation of how the effect is being applied on top of the source footage. Each of the boxes or strips represents a different instance of the source footage. And we have various parameters at our fingertips to adjust how we see these strips, starting with the number of actual strips that we see. So we can increase and decrease this number right here. Next, we can determine the size of of the strips as well as the relative height. And we can also vary the size of the strips on X and Y. There's an angle parameter which adjusts the angle uh, of all the strips together as well as the depth parameter to adjust the strips in Z space. After that, we have strip speed and strip speed vary as well as shift amount and shift vary. So strip speed is the overall speed of the strips, but it's a uniform speed and uh, speed vary adds some randomness to it so it can speed up and slow down. Think of it like a sine wave. It can be even or all over the place. After that, we have all strips shift X and all strips shift Y, which adjusts the uh, strips along the X and the Y of the actual uh, frame of the composition. And then after that is Z distort, which basically adjusts the uh, scaling of the source footage. Below that, we have the show parameter, which uh, defaults to result and shows the result of the plugin being applied to the footage. You can change this to strips over source as well as strips over black, which allows you to create a mat that you can use to do other things. And I'll show you that later. So the next parameter here is slow fade. Now, slow fade only really applies uh, when the plugin is set to automatic mode. Uh, and it determines the length of the effect transitioning from the start or the end of the actual clip itself. After that, we have full height, uh, which is a little checkbox here, and that forces the strips to be the full height of the composition. And last, we have wrap, seed, mask use, blur mask, invert mask, and help, uh, which are all standard parameters across the Sapphire plugins. So that is S parallax strips. So let me jump into Premiere and I'll show you S parallax strips transition. So for the most part, parallax strips transition is the same as the regular parallax strips effect, but there are some differences that I will show you. So in the transition effect, one of the first things that you see here is that you can change the strips from rectangular strips to linear strips. You can also override auto transition and set it to manual and then change the transition amount. Uh, but this applies more to programs like After Effects than it does to uh, editing applications like Premiere. 
uh, where you would actually be using it as a transition effect on the edit point. So next we have ensure full coverage, and it's an interesting parameter uh, because let's say that you have a small amount of strips that may not cover all of the video, thereby creating an undesirable transition. If you click this button, it will force the amount of strips to cover everything. So next we have slow fade and slow grow. On slow fade, if you increase this, uh, you can make the fade in or out slower. And if you set it to zero, you'll get a linear fade. Slow grow is similar. If you increase it, you make the strip start growing more slowly for a nicer look. And you can set it to zero for a linear growth rate through the effect. So let's get into some fun stuff here. Let me go ahead and run down really quickly how I went and created uh, this glorious masterpiece that's in front of us. Um, so video layer one here is uh, actually pre-comped. I went ahead and send this to After Effects uh, because I did some interesting things here in After Effects. So we have a video layer here and on top of that I have an adjustment layer and this particular adjustment layer has parallax strips uh, on top of it. So I went ahead and changed it to linear strips and I, uh, cause I keyframed the amount, as you can see right here, I keyframed the amount, uh, and it's creating, uh, this, uh, standard. Well, let's turn this layer off because I've got a blur attached to that. So it's basically just creating this transitional element, uh, right here, uh, over this, uh, piece of footage here. And on top of that, what I did is I then duplicated uh, that uh, particular layer and then I changed it to a mat as you can see right here and then I used it as a luma track mat uh, to add some blur uh, on top of that. So um, the strips transition is being used as a mat to kind of drive a blur uh, layer on top of that. Uh, so that is kind of what's going on. That's one of the things that I love about this, uh, this functionality of doing strips over black and creating a uh, track mat uh, inside of After Effects. And then over here, um, I have some other uh, layers of uh, let's see here we go. We got uh, we got parallax strips going on here, um, and that layer is off. This is the layer that has uh, parallax strips. And then also what I'm doing is I'm also uh, using a displacement map uh, on this piece of footage. And for this displacement map, I'm using uh, layer five, which is the uh, layer on top, which I turned off, uh, which has a strips over black uh, mat. Uh, applied to that as well too. So I'm using that layer to drive the displacement map of uh, on top of this layer. Uh, in addition to uh, some uh, some additional parallax strip funkiness going on. And what I did was I did hold keyframes uh, of the seed amount. So it just gave this kind of um, kind of jittery. Uh, look all the way through it. Uh, so that is what I did for this base layer right here. So now uh, let me show you what I did with the text uh, layer uh, on top. So I've got three different uh, text layers right here and each text layer is a different color as you can see right here. Um, where did the text fill layer? There we go. So um, I went ahead and I applied um, I apply parallax strips to uh, these individual text layers. Let's solo this. So as you can see kind of right here, what's going on, uh, where are we, there we go. Uh, so it is giving kind of this funky fractured look uh, to this piece of text. And then of course I added uh, another layer on top of that and then another layer on top of that to kind of give this, um, this RGB separation kind of look uh, of this particular um, portion of the text. And then let's unhide all of this. And then of course we go to this particular text layer right here. And um, I have parallax strips attached to that uh, as well too. And doing uh, some kind of fun uh, stuff going on right there with the fractured uh, text look with that as well too. And it gives us this nice overall 
uh, kind of look. So you can use, you can apply parallax strips to uh, text layers as well uh, to do some uh, fun things with it. And that's all I have for parallax strips. So don't forget to go to uh, BorisFX.com to download a free trial. And don't forget to go to the Boris FX YouTube channel and hit subscribe to see more videos just like this one. That's it for me. Bye for now. <laughs>